what's the marketing for you guys? So, you know, you guys are doing it different. You know, I mean, you, you cranked out what two albums here in like the last year and a half or so. I mean, like you guys are yeah. crushing like albums out, like un like anyone else that all he's just trying to ride one single into yeah. you know five five song EP, and you guys are putting out two albums and but not chasing the singles. So I mean, like, what's the marketing kind of you know the the singles kind of carry everybody now, right? From a marketing yeah. and and stuff, but what's I mean, you guys, I guess, just that organic following and, you know, living, you know, keeping your fans happy. I mean, what's your kind of approach on that on the marketing side? And I know you got team that manages it, but I'm sure y'all talk about it. Yeah, it's um, I mean, it stays back to that whole it goes all the way back to the 2011 thing I was talking about where, you know, our approach was always going to be do it our way. Word of mouth, hit hit the streets, you know worldwide and do is go to Europe and the UK as many times as we can every year. Um, the, you know, there's something to be said for a loyal, I mean, a lot of these guys and girls coming out now that let's say they have a number one hit, can't sell 500 tickets in their hometown. Hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, that's not, that's not doing anything for anybody. So yeah. um, I think that ours is more content, less, less directing one thing at one thing, like a single to radio, yep. which let's be honest, everything we'd kind of do is, you know, it's left, man. And it's, uh, we're doing it on purpose. Um, there, there's that mentality. I think that if we build it so big at one point, radio won't be able to not play it because it's, you know, <laughs> the fans want it. Yep. The country fans want it. And even if it's like a rock thing, you know, we, we've kind of leaned a little bit more rock some, and this new record, we're, we're about to start a new one um, next month and it's leaning a little bit more rock, but it's like, you know, I'm not mad at a rock station in Cincinnati playing it, you know, cause it's all the same thing. So I think our, our, our idea for marketing is as many irons on the fire, we put out, putting out more records and songs and videos and all that stuff and touring as much as you can it's more irons on the fire. Every one of them is going to do something for you. So um, I, I believe in that one for our particular situation. You know, like for some of these kids out doing it now, it wouldn't that wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Because they don't sound any different from Thomas Rhett or uh, whoever to yeah. make a dent without that radio single. But, um, you know, that thing about 500 tickets in your hometown, if you can't do that, that's you're you're somebody in your team is doing it wrong like we just did two headlining sold out shows at the Ryman in Nashville that's 2500 tickets each night and that's realistically 20 years of kicking ass and working for it and 11 specifically with this band or 10 with this with this band so you know there's there's i don't think there's there's maybe six or seven other country artists in town that could probably do two nights of the rhyme and sell it out that are at our level. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, right. So it's, I think uh, there's something, we're doing something right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, but I think it starts with the music. I mean, that's the, that's the bottom line, you know? I hope so because that's the easy part. You know, that's yeah. the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're playing the game, right? You're getting content out there a lot. That's why I caught, you caught my own social once I kind of heard you and, and, through the grapevine and all that. It's funny. I had coffee Anderson. I don't know if you've heard of him. Who's 100% yeah. independent out of Texas. He was on Netflix and to this day, doesn't have a record deal, but I think makes more, more money than a lot of, uh, the B level, you know, Nashville Dude, guys. Those Texas dudes, man, they don't mess around with, I think he's from Texas. Ain't yeah, he? he is. I think yeah. he spent some time in California, but he's, I think he's originally Texas. Yeah. And Did he's there he, now. Um, he, yeah, I met him when I was in the studio. I was doing Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters. We're making a record together. And we walked out of the vocal room and Coffee was standing there. And, you know, he's a big guy. Big dude. Six, six something. And I just hear like, like hey, Jaron, uh, <laughs> Kofi, you know, and he puts his hand. And I was like, hey, man, you know, <laughs> I had no idea. Um, and so we sat there and talked for a minute. Really super guy. Seems very smart. Um, but, yeah, the, the Texas thing is so interesting because, we did a lot of going back and forth to Texas in the beginning, trying to build something down there. Um, and Texas is Texas. If you're from Texas, you know, then they'll, they'll they're listen to it. They don't, it. It could be even terrible music, but they'll represent it because it's Texas. Yeah. Um, but I remember talking to Randy Rogers 
one day on the road and he told me what he made in one year just in Texas alone. And I said, dude, and he was at the time he had a record deal in Nashville. He was going back and trying to do the radio thing. Yeah. I was like, dude, if what are you doing? I would not leave the house if I made that much money in one year and once and didn't have to leave Tennessee. Holy shit, man. Uh, and he was just like, oh, man, you know, I was like, well, obviously you don't know what people are making in Nashville because you're way ahead of the game, Bo. <laughs> yeah, I think it's being spread thin with all the. I don't know. The sea, there's a sea of sameness a little bit, like you said, going on. That's the only negative. I, I like that country's gotten more mainstream a little bit and all that, but it's, I don't know, some of the stuff I'm I'm kind of having to look and remind myself who it sounds like the same thing I heard on the last one. But you don't, well, that's why you have three playlists. That's I know. why you have the one. Yeah. Well, hey, the, cool thing about, the cool thing about the country genre, I've, I told somebody this on um, something else. It, it's neat because – you've got room. You've got room for a guy like Eric Church who's doing his own thing. Could be a little heavier. Could be whatever. Still country, as, you know, as it gets with that tenor voice. Yep. Um, his delivery and the songwriting. And then you got room for Sam Hunt, who's taking his approach. You know, who's doing the more talky kind of thing. But you know, Beachin was like that too. Where it's like talking in the verses and all that stuff. And then yep. you have room. You have room for us, a band that's just completely off the map, and but every now and then hits you with something that makes a little bit, a little bit of sense to be in the genre. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting. That's what I like about country music. There's just so much, so much, you know, different. That there's just different takes on it. I guess you know, like Kip Moore's Bruce Springsteen. You know, like hmm. that kind of lane. It's it's neat. Everybody kind of has a lane. It's pretty fun. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and of course check out one of these other clips for all the latest tips and insights we'll see you next time